I have a question for you. What if the god of this age who brought you this? Also brought you this. Transform this into this. What if he made him look like this? And him like this? What if he depicted this like this? Dear Lord, baby Jesus, or as our brothers to the south call you, hey Zeus, we thank you so much for this bountiful harvest of dominoes, KFC, and the always delicious Taco Bell. Alchemists try to change something that is inferior, imperfect, or unacceptable in their view into something that is better, more perfect, and closer to what they desire. You'd be surprised. Now kids, because of Harry Potter, are asking a lot more intelligent questions. At its most basic level, alchemy is the magician imposing their will upon our reality. For Satan to achieve his goals, the magic he'll utilize is no cheap parlor trick. To wake up, you must think bigger. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not... Uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and and that's the way it happened. And, and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. Because we didn't go there. You've heard the saying, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and it's a painful process to build it back again. It was all recorded on these telemetry tapes. So where is this hard evidence? I haven't uh, seen anything that indicates the telemetry data is even in existence. And as I said, even if we had it, we don't have the machines to play it back. But your, you, your own research has shown the telemetry data is missing. That's, that's right. Could this be true? Mankind's first interplanetary exploration and the original science data is Apollo missing? Houston, radio check over. If it's anywhere, it should be here at NASA's Goddard Space Center in Maryland, home to the National Space Science Data Archives. This film you're making now, what is it? I just have a name. I mean, do you have you have a name for it yet, I think or are you? Calling it, did we go? Did we go? Okay. I mean, it's actually a fair question. Okay. Doesn't have it either. The Smithsonian right. doesn't have it. Right. Johnson doesn't right. have it. Right. 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 We we've been unable to 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 track it down. I mean, we don't know. Say that reminds me. Have I ever seen clear footage of a plane hitting the Pentagon? You know the most secure facility in the world with cameras and securities out the wazoo? Ah, right. None available. Uh, where this, this telemetry data ended up, and we don't know the, what, what path it may have taken. So, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't really give you much of a clue as to, as to where this data ended up and whether it, it still exists. <laughs> what if they didn't just fake the moon landings and destroy the footage and data? What if they were faking space before and after the Apollo missions?
I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible. Um, and you can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> like, we'd have way better CGI if it was fake. First task, of course, was to, to deploy Telsat. Uh, it was a nighttime deploy, and so this is a TV picture, nighttime TV picture. It's like uh, in the day, you just can't uh, see it too well. And in the um, pilot seat during this operation, uh, sort of monitoring the uh, motion of the vehicle, making sure that it was steady and that the, uh, the, the you know, there were very few uh, vibrations of any sort. Here's a picture of the INSAT uh, actually being deployed from the uh, spacecraft. You can see that the, the deploy went very smoothly at the moment of did you see it in the background? There was a guy in the background, man. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. You can't deny that that's someone in the background. There's a guy moving in the background. Here, watch it again. Watch it closely. I, I looked up or I tried to look up the size of this rocket. I, I found this picture. You can see it's massive. So if that rocket is in space and if there is a guy in the background in that footage, that means that there are like giants, but like insane big giants floating around in space looking at NASA. That's, that's probably why they don't dare to go back to the moon and why they hide so much stuff. Space is full of giants. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. These are virtual reality contacts overlaid on the eyes so actors can interact with things in 3D space. All in real time. Uh, this picture here is actually Tim's fault. His hand uh, breaches the 3D mic floating in front of him. We all know NASA uses wires and sometimes we'll catch them like this here. The guy pulled on his wire. However, some days when you're filming live, things just don't work out. and It becomes so blatantly obvious, it's ridiculous. So in this clip, they're talking live feed and what you know, we have a astronaut go by us in the background, uh, obviously trying to give it a more realistic, spacey, station busy effect. The only problem is the camera that was supposed to mask this harness out or the uh, video feed is not working. And so we see the guy come flying along in a harness on his wires. Pretty amazing. But that's not all that goes wrong here. They're wearing augmented uh, contact lenses so that they can interact with these 3D objects. Now, in this scene, the guy on the left in the green shirt, he thinks he sees an object in 3D space that's being broadcast to him. So he grabs it and he puts it off to the side. We have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom and peace. Your world is a lie. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. We need the legislature the recognize that there is a debate about whether critical the Earth thinking. is round or flat. No, no, no. And you let's said, encourage critical thinking by saying there should be a legitimate debate between whether the Earth is round or flat. Because after all, any idiot can walk outside we're we're not and see it flat. To <laughs> The, uh, the picture of the Earth from uh, from space. There it is. Since you were a kid, you've seen this image. But uh, you've never seen it from that point of view. You know what? We adopted this whole model like four or five hundred years before the airplane. Four hundred years before the airplane, pretty much. It was like what, like beginning of the 1900s? They went to the North Pole in the 1900s. This is 1482. Nobody went to the top of the globe, to the bottom, or flew up, or built a skyscraper until, it's funny, back in the 60s when, when they went to the moon, this is the first time we actually had like an instrument of flight to actually go high enough to actually fucking check out if what we agreed to 500 years ago was real. 
So if they were wrong, after 500 years, the question is, would they tell you? Revelation 9.11 And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. The, uh, the zero-g illusion also that you see astronauts, uh, they look like they're floating or flying in space. It's achieved through three different ways. <coughs> One way is through zero-g planes. Uh, they're just Boeing 737 specially outfitted to do these parabolic maneuvers where they, they do a, a parabolic and then you have a zero-g like free fall state where it seems like you're floating for about a minute at a time you can keep this this going um, the second way when they're like at the fake international space station uh, fixing things outside of it this is done in a pool in a dark pool they're actually underwater um, and you can see bubbles rising out of the pool, uh, proving that they're in a pool in many of their spacewalks. Uh, so, so the outside space shots are done in the pool. The inside, uh, uh, most of the inside shots are done in zero-g planes. And then some of the longer inside shots are done with a green screen and harnesses. So they just kind of float on a harness in front of a green screen. And with these three methods, they're able to produce the uh, zero-g effect that everybody thinks is uh, them floating around in space. Uh, but in reality, uh, anything that goes up comes right back down. There is no point where you can just go up, 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 and then, oh, I'm floating now, and I get to float through infinite space now forever. That's the illusion. That doesn't happen. You will always come back to the Earth. You'll always fall right back down. No matter how high you go up? As high as, high as any non-NASA source has gone. It's proof right there. This is an official NASA photo of the first Apollo 11 lunar module landing on the moon. I mean, it's right there. This is proof, man. It's the picture's right there. It's landing on the moon. But the only problem I have with this picture is that it's taken from the moon. Do you see Photoshop? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And if those of you think this technical difficulty was planned and think I'm scamming you, go do it for yourself. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in on the Earth in Photoshop. Do you see the Earth? Yep. Okay, I'm going to go to Image, Adjust, Levels, and I'm going to bring the levels over here. And I'm going to bring the levels up. Uh-oh. What is that? Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Why is there a square box around the Earth allegedly taken from the scientists on the moon in Apollo 17? Before this spinning ball Earth came around, the first person to think of the spinning ball Earth was also uh, the first Freemason, Pythagoras of Samos. Most Freemasons uh, trace their um, ancestry of a fuel back to Pythagoras as being the first Freemason. Um, and that was 2,500 years ago. But his idea didn't catch on at all until about 500 years ago when Copernicus, another Freemason and Jesuit, uh, wrote his book um, promoting this spinning ball earth and uh, concept. And then Kepler and Newton and Galileo, they took it from there. And now NASA and um, RASA and all the other space agencies, their experts like Carl Sagan and Neil deGrasse Tyson, they're continuing this heliocentric spinning ball earth gravity myth that's been going on for 500 years. They keep adding on to it now. Now you've got a big bang and evolution and aliens and come out and say they've found life on other planets soon. They've already given us fake pictures from Mars claiming that uh, there's a pyramid and sphinx on Mars trying to cement this alien progenitor propaganda into us. Just what if the Bible were true? In like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. All of this drive toward the end times is about him, after all. <laughs>